Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and today we are out here looking for new plants and new pets to include in our jar aquariums. We've been to this location once in the past, about four years ago, and we collected our water lettuce here, which we still have. I'm very excited about that. Uh, at the time, I happened to see a very interesting plant out in the water that I could not get to, and nor could I identify it at the time. But that was four years ago. We've gained a lot of experience since then. And lately we've been playing with a lot of hornwort. And that mysterious plant did resemble hornwort. So that's what we're looking for today. Now uh, I have some bad news. This location has gone downhill over the last four years. There's crime scene tape everywhere, beer cans, uh, the boardwalk is falling apart. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, so I won't name this location, but it is very near Bucket Ponds headquarters. So let's jump off that boardwalk, get down here safely on the ground, and see what we can find. Right away, I recognize some of these plants. You may recognize them as well. This is small leaf spiderwort, the same plant that we found in our backyard during the Looking for Dayflower video, which is a video that you guys kind of requested, and I am happy to have made it. So over here near the uh, edge of the water, I am looking for a plant that resembles hornwort. We were out here four years ago collecting plants, and we found water lettuce, which we still have. But today I have returned in search of a plant that I got a brief glimpse of back then. Now I have found a crayfish exoskeleton here. That's very interesting. Uh, and many of you have probably never seen anything like this, but uh, this is pretty common if you're in this hobby. Uh, I'm just going to put it back where it was, but I'm sure it's full of microfauna and small animals trying to chew on that uh, exoskeleton. Now it's raining as I record the voiceover. I sure hope that doesn't screw up our audio. <laughs> the water has a very deep red hue to it, and the water level is also very high. It's moving very quickly. That's because we had a hurricane here recently, and it raised the water level. This area is actually an overflow channel coming off of a small lake. So it's very interesting. I noticed a lot of these floating plants here, and this one happened to dry out. Its roots have turned completely blue, and I believe that's from cyanobacteria that were most likely living in the root structure. And that have died, you know, when it dried out. I'm looking around here in this area, and it seems like these floating plants are being collected here intentionally. Um, they are invasive, they are not necessarily wanted in this location, they're not native here. And it looks like uh, this overflow canal channel may have been designed in a way to capture them. It's very interesting. Uh, now the plant I'm looking for, it does resemble hornwort. It looks kind of like a root structure from these plants, but uh, no. Uh, maybe we'll have more luck over here. There are tons of these floating plants, and I have identified them. That is a water hyacinth, notoriously invasive. I will be throwing a few into my bucket uh, just to hopefully collect any uh, small animals off of the root structures. I'll have to do some reading. It may be banned in my location. So if we do collect any, I might have to destroy it, which is horrible. But you gotta, you know, play by the rules and be careful. Anytime you're collecting possibly invasive species, make sure that they are legal to possess in your state or county. So I see another little interesting place over here, and I notice some duckweed in this area. So we're going to get a little scoop of the duckweed into our bucket and see what we can find. You may not know this, but every piece of duckweed, every single little leaf, is absolutely covered in microscopic life. It's amazing. Um, every piece of duckweed is crawling with organisms. So even if we have Lambda Minor at home, I'm still excited to see it out in the wild and to collect a bit of it. And these are the water hyacinth plants. They're actually very cool plants. They're very interesting. They have like uh, air pockets in them that allow them to float. And uh, yeah, they're very cool, you know. Uh, I understand why they're unwanted, but again, it's still a nifty plant, fun to investigate. As we walk along the water's shore here, along the banks, I am looking for that mystery plant. This is a long video, you guys, but there's a payoff towards the end, trust me. Uh, but here we have a nice little collection point where a bunch of duckweed and water hyacinth has been pushed into a little corner. That's good for us. 
because this is prime location for small pets, small animals. You know, detritus worms and ostracods and all the little fun animals that we like to play with. Uh, they're most likely going to be hanging out right here. So I have a handful of this stuff. This is Lemna Minor Duckweed mixed with some Mud Midget and some Water Spangles, I believe. Those larger duckweed-like leaves, I believe that is Water Spangles. A welcome addition to our collection. I'm also going to get a handful of mud, just because you never know what's living in the mud here. And uh, that's where you're going to find a lot of your worms and invertebrates as well. Now up here on the banks near the actual lake, you know, uh, there's a similar section where a lot of floating plants have been collected. And right around here is where I saw that mystery plant all those years ago. It resembled hornwort, and now that we have more experience with hornwort, I'd really like to get a piece of this plant and check it out. In the meantime, I did find some beautiful water hyacinth flowers here, some nice little flowers. Uh, so it's a really cool plant. I hope that we can keep it. I'm still looking into it, though. Uh, the results are unclear as to whether or not it's legal for me to have that. But there's our plant that we're looking for. That's it right there. <laughs> like a mysterious sea creature, uh, uh, a leviathan in the ocean. We have found it, you know. And I'm very excited to see this plant right here four years later, right where we saw it before. Had no idea what I was looking at back then. And I have a very limited idea of what it might be now. But it does look to me a lot like hornwort. And uh, hopefully it will fulfill a similar role. Maybe we can use it in our jar aquariums. I think it looks really cool. It looks very brown and, and dead here. But I think that's because of the lake that it is in. That water is very red. And I believe the plant may be taking on that hue, that tone. But here we are, we got home, we set up a couple jars. I have a couple 18 gallon ponds outdoors where I kept some of the samples as well. So these jars have been cross contaminated with some of our bucket pond stuff. Really just a piece of frog bit and uh, some detritus worms to help clean things up. But the plant looks very interesting. Uh, it definitely resembles hornwort, but you can see some very strong differences as well. So, I'm very curious about this. Now, examining these samples, I see that we did catch quite a few aquatic case-carrying worms. Uh, you guys may or may not be familiar with them. This is a species that I've struggled to culture in the past. I'm glad to see them again. Maybe we get another shot. Uh, but they behave a bit like a worm and a snail at the same time. They glue together a little structure like a tube and they carry that on their body. They drag it around, and they use that for safety and camouflage. These guys also love cucumber slices, so uh, they are a welcome addition if we can get them to establish in our containers. I think that we don't have enough debris for them to build their tubes, and it causes them to die. I don't know for sure. So I'll have to add some debris to these containers, and I have a perfect idea for that. Here's a better look at that mystery plant's uh, structure. Uh, again, up close, it is nothing at all like our hornwort, and that's okay, you know. I threw together this third jar, again, just as a test. I want to see if it grows rapidly from cuttings, or if uh, maybe, you know, I can study it a bit better as it grows. We just have to hope for the best and see what happens. So most of what we collected, it remains outdoors in an 18-gallon bucket pond. I'm keeping that isolated so that we can uh, have access to those wild samples and just in case everything in these jars uh, perishes. But I did bring over the floating plants and those unusual stems. Now this part's a little nasty. I'm going to add some debris for those worms and some plant food. Uh, this is fresh squeezed filter juice from one of our uh, very elaborate aquariums. Uh, that will add quite a bit of material to help get these plants to grow and to encourage our worms to make some little uh, shells or, or tubes or whatever. All right, I'll come back to those jars in a few days, but right now I just want to show you uh, that our good buddies Wheelbite and Claywise helped me to identify the mystery plant. It is, in fact, Carolina fanwort. Yeah, Kabamba. A very fun plant, very fun to say. And it was formerly very popular in aquariums. It still is to a limited extent. Uh, but it is native in my area and I'm very excited to find an aquarium plant out there in the wild. 
we may be able to make use of this after all. It is not quite related to hornwort, but it may fulfill a similar niche if we can get it to grow. So this is August 18th. This is like 11 days after capture. And I've allowed the tanks to settle a bit. I've added a little cucumber here and there. You'll see quite a few of the case worms moving about. They get, it, uh, they get more energetic with more food. And I think that that uh, filter juice, <laughs> excuse me, uh, added some much needed debris and plant food in here. But I'm noticing uh, some movement in here. We have a new friend. I don't know what you are. Uh, very interesting. We have a very fast-moving little friend here. I don't think that it's an insect larva. I think it's... It seems to move like some kind of shrimp or something. Um, yeah, I may need your help. He's very hard to narrow down to get a video. Kind of like the scuds that we have in our other jar that we got from our good buddy Tony. Trying to get a better image of this mystery creature. There he is. I have no idea, you guys. Yeah, I don't think it's an insect larva or any kind of instar from any beetle or anything like that. It moves too quickly in the water. It seems to have little legs. It's kind of pink or orange. And let's see if he will come by for us and we can get a view. There we go. Check him out. Yeah, so I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> uh, still very interesting. I'm happy to see it in our container here. And hopefully we have a few of them and we can get them to rep reproduce to breed we can study this little mystery creature more closely uh, that's part of the fun for these projects you know uh, you go out there you find something you're like wow what is this you know you found some little pet that normal people just don't care about they don't they don't want to care they have better things to do in their mind uh, but for us for people in this hobby it's like amazing you know like oh wow i found a whole new type of life uh, I wonder if I can work it into my ecosystem. I wonder if I can improve my bladder snail containers or, uh, you know, maybe even raise a new type of live food for my fish. You know, it's very interesting. I love finding new things. Now, from the samples that I kept outdoors, I did go ahead and take a jar full just to check them out. And we do have some insect larvae in here, mosquito larvae in particular. Uh, so that, you know, has me concerned. I will have to add a gambusia or two some mosquito fish into this pond that this came from. I hope that's not confusing. Uh, but I did notice something else as well. We have tons of tadpoles in here, you guys. That's right. Uh, these are <laughs> uh, not from those wild samples. They were actually from the oasis. I believe our frogs have infiltrated our new pond that we put off to the side with the wild samples inside of it. And they've laid eggs. Yeah, so this is a direct effect of the oasis uh, creeping into our outdoor projects. We have a lot of frogs here. Uh, maybe you've seen a few of my short videos that we upload talking about it. But these guys are cute, and I think it's really cool to see the oasis infiltrating other projects. Uh, I will have to release them back into their pond. I'd love to keep them as pets. I love frogs. I love tadpoles. But I'm not fully equipped to raise them and to feed them properly. And uh, these little proto-frogs, I want them to go out there and to join the Oasis ecosystem. I don't want them to die because I make a, made a mistake, you know, raising them. So I will put this jar back outside. But for now, we'll just take a look at them. There's so many. Um, our frogs are very aggressive when it comes to reproduction. And uh, they'll lay eggs and pretty much anything that will hold water. So these guys are only a week or so old. And it's very cool to see them. They're most likely American green tree frogs, possibly uh, pig frogs, though they seem a little too small for that. But those are our two dominant species in the oasis, and it's really cool to see their babies. Yeah. So here's a look at that 18-gallon pond that I built outdoors to contain the bulk of the wild-caught samples. We have that Carolina fanwort in here. I'm sure we have more of those mystery creatures as well. And, of course, our... Uh, oasis frogs have moved into the pond. Uh, I might build one of these on camera, do a real build video, make it nice. Uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. We'll probably do that next. But if nothing else, we captured this interesting floating plant, which I believe is water spangles. It's a type of aquatic fern or floating fern. And it's not really duckweed, but it be kind of behaves like it does. Uh, but we also captured our fanwort. 
and uh, the initial week to two week testing looks like it's going to survive in our jars. I'm very excited to see how it works if I add it to a, a nice aquarium, you know, with an air pump and plenty of plant food and microfauna. Uh, I'm very curious to see how things will turn out. Unfortunately, we know that all of these samples are absolutely covered in cyanobacteria, so we'll have to be very careful. Uh, I'm not too afraid of blue-green algae. And in fact, I think we could use it to make some very interesting products, uh, but I don't necessarily want to bring it into my containers until we are ready. Whoa, getting all shaky with the camera there. One more look at the water spangles. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching the video. We did some excellent wild collecting. Uh, we took about a week and a half to really observe uh, the samples. We found a mysterious new creature. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't get a better view. Uh, it moves so quickly. Uh, hopefully you'll forgive me and we'll kind of nurture it. Maybe we have a few more. And if we're lucky, we can get them to breed. But we found some new plants and some new pets, and I'm really excited. There's a look at those 18-gallon ponds, and I have a few more right here that really need a, a good build video. So I think I will build one in the next video. I hope you're ready for that. I'll see you in about a week or so, and we'll talk about it. Lots of big things in Bucket Ponds coming up, and I am so excited. Thank you.